Hello everybody, so it's exam season. In the UK we have what's called GCSEs. I don't know what they stand for, but they are the exams you take at the end of secondary school when you're 15 years old. My brother-in-law is 15 years old and is going through his right now. Um, I'm gonna have a go at one. I left school 14 years ago, I'm 29 years old, so I took these 14 years ago. I'm gonna have a go at AQA Science A Unit Biology B1 um, from the 5th of June 2015 to see how well I do. I'm not expecting to do well, and I guess the moral of the story in advance is that if I do terribly at this exam, it doesn't matter because I've done all right in my life, you know? I'm doing okay, so try really hard in your exam, study hard, but don't stress too much. I have my pen, I've got some water, and I have my phone. I'm not gonna use my phone for anything other than the timer to set an hour, and also for the calculator, because I'm allowed a calculator for this, so. Siri, set timer, one hour. I love a good countdown. He does, doesn't he? Right, let's begin. Have to say, feeling a little bit nervous. I've got to fill in the front, so my surname is Chapman. Other names are James. I'm actually a James officially, if you didn't know that. And then sign the front. All right, let's begin. Humans use the nervous system to react to changes in the environment. Question 1A. Which word means a change in environment? Draw a ring around the correct answer. Uh, neuro and reflex or stimulus, it's got to be stimulus, surely, right? Question A2. Figure 1 shows a light receptor cell. Use the correct answer from the box to label part A on figure 1. <laughs> okay, so I've got a choice of chloroplast, cytoplasm or vacuole. Oh, I have literally no idea. I'm going to call you cytoplasm, I've literally got no idea though. Next question. A newspaper headline states, people in the UK are the laziest in the world. Information from figure three does not support the newspaper headline. So just one reason why the newspaper headline may be wrong. Okay, the newspaper headline says we are the laziest in the world. That kind of would make sense because it says that 62% of us are the laziest in the world, but it only covers France, Germany, Italy, and the Netherlands. So one reason might be that it doesn't talk about any other country. Limited sample. They need to talk about America and Japan and Azerbaijan and stuff. Sticking with the theme of healthy children, doctors gave a percentage rating to the health of 16 year olds. 100% is perfect health. Table, sh table two shows the amount of exercise 16 year olds do and their health rating. Okay, so the lowest rating is 72 and that is for children who do less than 30 minutes of exercise every week. The highest is for children that do 30, 300. That's Alexis, my Amazon thing talking. I'm not asking her for help. I'm doing an exam. It's exam conditions. If you do 300 or more minutes of exercise a week, your health rate is a 92. Okay. What conclusion can be made about the effects of exercise on health? Well, the more exercise you do, the healthier you become. I can't spell exercise, even though it's written right in front of me. So I added an extra C. By the way, when I did exams at school and at university and at sixth form, I used to get marked down because my handwriting is so appalling that the, uh, the teacher who marked it would go, I think I know what you're talking about, but I can't really read it, so I can't give you the mark. So, whoops. Right. We're on to question three, everyone. Figure four shows a method used to grow pure cultures of bacterium. Okay, here's the figure. Name apparatus A and apparatus B. Apparatus A is, what are you? It looks like a uh, stirrer. What do you call a stirrer? Apparatus B, I know that one, that's this guy. What are you called? A petri dish. How do you find a petri dish though? Petri dish. P E A? I don't know what A is though, what's this guy? This little dude here. Is it a stirrer? A spatula? Oh, oh, um, oh, I know what it is. It's the thing you kind of take the juice out with the bacterium and then you put it on the petri dish. Ah. I'm gonna just call it a spatula. I don't think that's right. Speculum? No. Spatula, I'm going for, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong. What is the maximum temperature that should be used in schools to grow bacteria in apparatus B? That is not something I learned at school. The maximum temperature that should be used in schools to grow bacteria in apparatus B. My choices are 10, 25, or 50 degrees centigrade. Ah, uh, no, I'm gonna say 25. I don't know why. Is that wrong? Should it be 50? It can't be 10, the maximum temperature. What do you think it's 50? It's only worth one mark, Jim, move on. I'm gonna, uh, uh, I'm gonna go 50, crossing out 25. 
and we're moving on. It's worth one mark. We can say goodbye to one mark. I'm slightly concerned of time now. I'm going to check. Oh, I've got 37 minutes, 41 seconds to go. I'm on page 11 of 24. Although 24 doesn't have a question on it. Nor does 23. Page 11 of 22. Oh, okay, so, yeah. We are moving on to question 6. Which term describes organisms that can tolerate very hot or very cold places? Draw a ring around the correct answer. An environmental species, an extremophile species, an indicator species. That would be an extremophile species, because I find them fascinating, and I know that. The number of penguins can be used to monitor changes in temperature of the environment. Temperature readings could also be taken using a thermometer. What is the advantage of using penguins instead of a, th instead of a thermometer to monitor changes in temperature of the environment? I don't know. My options are living organisms show long-term changes. Thermometers cannot measure temperatures below zero. That's that's not true, is it? Is that true? I don't know. Thermometers do not give accurate readings. Can thermometers not go below zero? Surely they can. They've got all sorts of things that can go below zero. Maybe it's living organisms show long-term changes, but surely if you have a thermometer there, and you just come back to it in a year, then two years, and three years, and a decade, you can see long-term changes. But okay, I'm gonna go for that one. When Darwin returned to the UK, very few people believed in his theory of evolution. A different uh, scientist suggested that the changes that occur in an organism during its lifetime can be inherited by its offspring. Uh, what was the name of this scientist? I want to say it was Lamarck, and Lamarck's on here. My choices are Lamarck, Mendel, and uh, Semmelweis. I've never heard of Semmelweis, and I'm pretty sure Mendel was... Was he like something to do with rocks? I think it was Lamarck, and it was like his theory of um, acquired acquisition. No, that's not the thing, that's two the same thing. See, it's acquired something, or acquisition something, I don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's Lamarck, so that's what I'm going to go for. Please be right. To be honest, if I get a question wrong on evolution, I'll be very annoyed, because I had a whole, um, a whole uh, module on it at university for an entire year, so <laughs> I should know. Many people in the UK take sleep- oh, this is question 8 now, okay, question 8. Many people in the UK take sleeping pills. The drug, phthalid thalidomide, uh, was developed it, as a sleeping pill in the 1950s. In the 1960s, thali thali thalidomide was banned. Recently, thalidomide has been used to treat other diseases. Name one disease thalidomide, thali thalidomide is used to treat now. Literally no idea. One disease is used to treat now. <laughs> Liver disease. That's a total stab in the dark. I think my degree in psychology is not helping me here, actually. Right, we're moving on to question nine now. Okay, so my final question. I have 10 minutes, 58 seconds left. I haven't used a calculator yet, that's good. Anyway, this is a longer question. I've got to fill this whole area here. In this question, you will be assessed on using good English, whoopsie, uh, organizing information clearly and using specialist terms where appropriate. I don't know, dude. This exam's getting intense now, actually. Uh, plants respond to different environmental factors. Describe how different environmental factors affect one, the direction of growth of roots, and two, the direction of growth of shoots. Um, okay. In your answer, you should refer to the role of plant hormones. Ooh. Okay. Do not refer to the artificial use of plant hormones by gardeners or scientists. Ooh, this one's worth six marks. I don't know anything about plant hormones. So I'm gonna bullshit. Here's what I've written. Plants respond to many different environmental factors. It's always good to put the uh, question in the answer. Uh, energy from the sun allows photosynthesis and the growth of shoots above the soil. Nutrients and water in the soil are absorbed by the roots um, and anchor the plant. No, absorbed by the roots that anchor the plant and uh, distribute hormones throughout. I've got hormones in there. That is my biology GCSE done. The next thing that's going to happen is I'm going to pass this exam over here. And this person here is going to mark my exam and give me my results. I think the top score was 60. Uh, I'm not sure how it works after that. How am I doing so far, Mark person? You've got your first wrong answer, Jim. Okay, so uh, section two, four out of seven. Not quite as hot. You're going to kick yourself on this one, Jim. 25? It's 25. Ah, you know my debate about the whole 25 degrees and 50 degrees thing? I crossed out 25 after marking 25 first. I went for 50 and it turns out it was 25. Bugger! What did I get? Three out of six. Three out of six on that section. <gasps> Daddy's stupid. He can't do his exams. Remember that drug, 
thalidomide that I can't pronounce, uh, and I just assumed it was for liver, liver disease because I had no idea. Turns out it treats leprosy. Who knew? I have made a strong comeback actually. There was a, it started off well, and there was a midpoint where it started to lap a bit. Um, and now I think I'm doing quite well. The last few sections I've got full marks, or nearly full marks. Okay, the, the time has come to add up all the scores of the sections to get my final score. Let's do this. I've got my calculator out. Okay, six. Six plus. Finally, plus seven. Plus seven. Okay. That gives me 45. So you did biology unit one, higher tier. Oh, higher tier? Didn't know that. So yeah, biology, biology unit one, higher tier, didn't know that. And tell me your score again. 45. You're on an A. Oh my god! And four marks of an A star. There you go. Still got it. Right, I'm feeling very smug now, so I'm going to end this video here. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you are doing your exams right now, I know there's a lot of you who are older, uh, but for those people who are older, maybe you enjoyed watching this as like nostalgia. But for those of you who are going through your GCSEs, don't panic. Try your hardest, do your best, but you know, they're not everything. Just be happy and stuff. Um, good luck, and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.